What's up, guys? Hello, hey, family. My name is Samantha Grimes, and you're watching Samantha Grimes TV, a place dedicated to the total. All right, family, do me a huge favor. If you like natural hair care content, motivational content, lifestyle content, and just everything dedicated to your inward spiritual health as well as your outward spiritual health, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. And if you've already done that, then hit the notification bell so that you do not miss any future uploads. So if you are a newbie, my name is Samantha Grimes. I am a professional life strategist as well as a natural hair content creator right here on YouTube. And if you are an oldie and you've been rocking with me on this channel and you know that you wanna book a session with me, whether that be life coaching sessions, faith-based counseling sessions, a little natural hair coaching, whatever you are truly interested in, then go ahead and visit my website at www.sgls.info. Once again, that is www.sgls.info. Info, and I look forward to working with you. All right, family, family, I am so excited about this video because today we are about to enter into a four week Bible study. Yes, four weeks, which means four YouTube videos, okay, over the next month by the end of August, okay. And we are talking about growing in forgiveness. Now, I was intentional with naming it growing in forgiveness versus just saying forgiveness because I want you to understand that biblical principles and different things that God has called us to do, given us to do, gifted us to do, we have to grow in. We have to mature in. And a lot of times when there's a lack of knowledge, when there are too many gray areas, too many blank spaces, um, we, we kind of can feel the difficulty it is to do these things because we just have questions and we're just confused. And so listen, you're not gonna get through this life without forgiving. It doesn't matter if you feel like you've forgiven every single person in your life, something is gonna happen at some point where you need to forgive, whether it's on a small scale or whether it's a hard thing. Okay, we're always gonna have to forgive. We're gonna have opportunities to be offensive where we didn't realize it or we just had a bad day or whatever the case may be. And so we need a healthy perspective and I need a healthy uh, uh, vantage point when it comes to forgiveness, okay? How do we really grow in this? How do we really mature in this? How do we feel confident in this? So you and I are gonna search the scriptures together over the next four weeks, okay? And we're gonna just gonna tackle maybe some major areas that kind of rise up in the scriptures that can kind of help us navigate and help us to see, oh, I see myself in that area. I see myself in that area. I definitely do that okay if we can grab hold of those things then we can have a, a clearer blueprint by the Word of God um, on how to forgive because family forgiving is a gift trust me it, it will it'll set you free so without further ado let's get into this video let me go ahead and give you a little bit of background on our story that we're going to be digging into. And it is a story of Saul and David. Okay, you can find this in 1 Samuel. Um, Saul and David. Basically, Saul was the current king of Israel. Okay. Um, and David uh, was the next king of Israel that was anointed to be king. I'm not sure. The scriptures did not show if... Saul knew that David was anointed to be king as much as he just liked David. He favored David. He was almost like a spiritual father, you would say, to David, okay? And so David was in his palace. He, uh, Saul was taunted nights and, and, and days by an evil spirit. And so David would come in and play the harp. And as he was playing the harp, it would soothe Saul and cause his demons to go away, right? As they had this beautiful relationship, um, David has the famous story where David uh, slayed Goliath and after that he was in Saul's army and so he was favored every time they went off to battle and David was bold and he was courageous and aggressive and confident and it was all the beautiful things well that's the backstory of their relationship right so if you go into the scriptures we're reading 1 Samuel 18 6 through 11 it reads when the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs, with timbrels and lyres. As they danced, they sang. Saul had slain his thousands, 
but David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. Other scriptures said that jealousy entered Saul's heart. The next day, an evil spirit from God came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre. And he usually did. Saul had a spear in his hand and he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. So the point that I want to dig out, starting off with just this piece of the scripture, was the audacity. Okay? A lot of times the difficulty in forgiving somebody else is that they had the audacity. That is what we can't get past. All right? A lot of times, especially when you find it to where this person is more, it is more difficult to forgive this person than this person. It's the thing. I have seen and experienced in my own life, sometimes there are things that you just expect from people, okay? There are things that you're aware, this is who they are, this is what they do. I am not really surprised, I'm not really hurt, it's not really no thing. But then there are those that you don't see this coming. You don't expect it. It, it, it. It's difficult to swallow. It is difficult to process. And we can clearly see that within this relationship, he had a good relationship with Saul. Saul did not ring a bell and say, David, jealousy has now entered my heart. There's a chance that Saul didn't even have any idea that jealousy had entered his heart. The Bible tells us as the people reading to get clarity. The Lord reveals that to us. God can see that in Saul's heart. But Saul probably felt like, no, he was being discerning. He was being wise. And he was, no, no, let me make sure he don't come and how to take my kingdom. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that to try to downplay him or whatever, whatever it is. And no idea that he's even jealous. So it seems almost like when Saul hurled the sword at David, which was, you could clearly see the man was trying to kill him. It probably was a, an immediate, the audacity, an immediate shock. This is not a stranger being mean for no reason. This is somebody that David loves, he honors, he values, he sees, okay? He is honored that he's in his army. He is honored that he gets to play for him. He is he 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 has so much love and honor for him and the person that he loves and he honors is the one trying to kill him. One of the greatest lessons that God has ever spoken to me in a season of of forgiveness of a person was Samantha, you can't just forgive them for what they did. You have to forgive them for who they are. Guys, there's a, there's a strong chance that sometimes the people that God has called you to forgive, man, this is who they are right now. It may not be who they are forever, okay? We always wanna believe for healing and for breakthrough and for deliverance from certain people for certain people. But at the end of the day, this is who they are today, okay? This is what they did right now. There's a chance they're not gonna be apologetic. And a lot of times the offense that you are carrying is because you just can't believe they did that. You can't believe they lied to you. You can't believe they hurt you. You can't believe that they would ever speak about you. You can't believe that they ever gossiped about you. You can't believe, you just can't believe it. And sometimes that's what you gotta lay down, the shock. The I can't believe it. Why would you? And and you start going inward. Look, what 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 did I do to deserve this? It, did I was I too mean? Was I too soft? Was I? And a lot of times it has nothing to do with any of that. As much as this is an opportunity for you to mature, and for you to grow, and for you to give somebody the gift of forgiveness, even if they never truly value it. They never truly receive it and they never 
maybe they may never change. We always believe and have faith that they will. But we're not talking about them today as much as we're talking about you. So the first thing that I want you to do after reading this is I want you to lay down the audacity. Lay down the frustration. Maybe it was your mom. Maybe it was your dad. Maybe it was your auntie. Maybe it was your grandparents. Maybe it was somebody who you expected to be a particular way because of who they are. And they weren't. As long as you are holding on to that, it is holding up your life. So we're going to pause there. That was just our intro, just our beginning. And we're going to dig deeper as the weeks progress.